hello welcome to the law show today we are going to deal with an interesting topic whether the oba of benin has power over land after the land use act 1978 now that's a simple topic does the oba of benin continue to have power over land in benin benin kingdom after the land use act 1978 now you all know that in 1978 the federal military government headed by Olusha Basanjo at that time promulgated what they called the land use act where he tried to achieve certain things with land since before 1978 the Obar of Benin had power over land now after 1978 what is the law what has been the practice is that consistent with the law or is it against the law or is there a better formulation of the law we'll be looking at it when we come back don't go away it's going to be interesting so let's start from the beginning first off before 1978 if you wanted to acquire land in Bini kingdom you required what is called the obas approval so um there is a procedure for it which the supreme court laid out in the case of uh, gold and osarere a three-step process really three step you want to acquire land first you go and get the land from the from the owner of the land you buy it you pay him some money he puts you into possession that's the first step so second step you now approach the uh, community land allocation committee every community had a land allocation committee set up by the Obar of Benin so you approach them having purchased the land from the owner then they will um submit an application on your behalf to the Obar of Benin so the application will sort of read um from for example uh word, word 38 um Yokoba lot allotment committee to his royal majesty the Obar of Benin application for uh, allotment of land so they will say oh, we, we, we have the respectful honor to apply for allocation of land um you know this person has applied the land is free from any dispute so they will sign the, the chairman will sign members will sign if there's an enogi and all those people they will all sign then the oba upon receipt of it will write approved on it so that's what the people could call the oba's approval it was a golden document once you had it you had the land so three-step process one you bought the land from the owner two you approach the land um allocation committee who will confirm that it is free from dispute and then the third one the other will sign okay now this was what was applicable to all land within benin benin city and environs okay present day benin city and immediate environs um that was a practice before the land use act came into effect uh, i think it was 26th of march 1978 or thereabout so since the land use act came into effect 26th of March 1978, the Obas approval disappeared. The Obas approval disappeared. The Oba of Benin no longer, you know, really and truly approves any transfer of land at all, not at all. So if you had any Obas approval now, it must have predated 1978. Okay? But the question is why? Why is that? So we'll answer that, that question. Since 1978, um, people now buy land from individuals or from communities, go straight to the governor for consent or the local government chairman who gives them consent and then they have their, their certificate of occupancy and you know that's done. So you can either buy from the individual owners or community or family as the case may be and then go to the governor for for statute right of occupancy or the local government chairman for customer right of occupancy okay so i'm going to repeat that because there's an issue between there if you want land today in the kingdom you can either buy from the individual land owner or you buy from the family if it's a family land that has not been shared or you buy from the community right they give you community allocation huh? the one that the community allocation okay so with either of these documents, you do your survey plan, you go to the Ministry of Lands, you pay them, 
um, and then they give you statutory right of occupancy, which is um, evidenced by the certificate of occupancy issued by the governor. Or if the land is in a rural area, you get a customary right of occupancy. Okay, so you've got land. So now the actors, the main actors, the main actors in land transaction in Benin now are either individual families, um, individuals, okay, families, individuals, communities, and then the government, either state or local government. One one person, one entity is conspicuously missing. That is the Obar of Benin. So we want to look at how did that come about, why is that so, and whether that is right. Simple. Our job here is simple. Now, there's been, there's been a school of thought that the, land, the effect of the Land Use Act was to dispossess um, everyone from ownership of their land and give that land to the government and that the government now owns the land and consequently it is the government that can give either you know a statutory right of occupancy customer right of occupancy statutory certificate of occupancy or customer certificate of occupancy government no more no other person okay now in 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 a recent decision in the in a high court in a do state the the judge um whom i have greater respect for um stated you know that i think i have the judgment here that the community documents with the land documents allocation documents which communities use to allocate land to individuals is null and void because it is not from the governor or the local government chairman and I want to read a part of the judgment here. Um, I, I want to read it. Uh, this this one just just give me headache. Okay, it should give me headache. But I'm going to read it to you. I want to hear your opinion after you read this. The judge said, "Before the Land Use Act 1978, land in Benin was vested in the Oba of Benin." who held same in trust for the common good of all. Before the Land Use Act, 1978, land in Benin was vested in the Obar of Benin, who held same in trust for the common good of all. Okay? Good point, right? Owen, you agree it's a good point. Okay. <laughs> Before the Land Use Act, land in Benin was vested in His Royal Majesty the Obar, who held same in trust for the common good of all. Now, the judge continued, since the coming into effect of the Land Use Act, the Oba of Benin ceased to be the custodian of land in Benin. Aye. Since the coming into effect of the Land Use Act, the Oba of Benin ceased, ceased, stopped to be the custodian of land in Benin. The judge continued, it is ridiculous to think that what the law took away from the Oba of Benin, it is ridiculous to think that what the law took away from the Oba of Benin, what the law took away from the Oba of Benin, in this case, was now vested in the Oheige and elders of Ikweniro village. First, First of all, it says, since the coming into effect of the Land Use Act, the Oba of Benin ceased to be the custodian of land in Benin. Now, I've got the, I've got the Land Use Act here. Okay? I've got the Land Use Act here. And there are actually here 51 uh, provisions in it. It's a small pamphlet. There is nowhere in this book, in this law, that it says that the Oba of Benin ceased to be custodian of land in Benin. Nowhere. Nowhere. Actually, nowhere. Okay? That's number one. Number two, to say that it is ridiculous to think that the law took something away from the Oba of Benin relating to land is not, with due respect, and I say this with the greatest respect, 
I, I beg to differ. Okay, that's the best way we put it. I beg to differ. And I will show why in a minute. I will show why in a minute. The law, the land use act, did not, did not take, in fact, did not cause the Oba to cease to be custodian of land in Benin at all. At all. Why do I say that? Was the land use act targeted at the Oba of Benin? In Lagos, if you want to buy, now we, we hear of developments in Lagos around the, the Lekki area and all that, you know. You can't buy land there. Even the state government will not listen to you if you have not gone to acquire the land from the individual land or the families there. The Oniru families and all of them. You must go there and acquire the land. You must bring documents from them. You must, they must all sign. The head of the, all of them will sign. The ballet and all of them must sign before the state government will listen to you when you are applying for a certificate of occupancy. Go to the east. You cannot get a certificate of occupancy from the state government if the families and own land have not signed for you or the communities have not signed. You can't get it. Just forget about it. Okay, the even Delta, not too far from Edo, Delta. You go to the Robo area, the Shekiris and all that. The land in the Wari area are owned by individual families. I'm a lawyer. I've gone there to do investigation of titles. By the time you investigate the title, you discover there's a family. You must go and look for all that family, pay them the money, get them to sign. And then their traditional ruler must countersign. Otherwise, government will not recognize that document. So how is it that the case of the Oba of Benin is different? Now I'm not I'm not an apologist for the Oba. Everybody know if you if you have been listening to me, you know you know my attitude and my stance towards um, monarchies and all that. I'm a Republican at heart. I'm a Democrat at heart. I couldn't care less about um, about monarchs. I couldn't care less. But the law is the law. We cannot run away from the law because it affects one person or because it disadvantages the other. No 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 no. If we are true human rights activists, then we have to be human rights activists for everybody. And I say that this postulation, and, and I, I don't blame my lord, I, I think the judge got it from a case of Buka and Bashir. The case of Buka and Bashir was where the Court of Appeal said, 2014 case, Court of Appeal said that the main purpose of the Land Use Act is to achieve a fusion between the land tenure system in the northern Nigeria and the southern Nigeria whereby absolute ownership of land by families, by communities, and individual became abolished. Ooh, how can that be? That the main purpose of the Land Use Act was to achieve a fusion between the land in system in the northern Nigeria and the southern Nigeria, whereby absolute ownership of land by families, by Ownership of land by families was abolished. Ownership of land by communities was abolished. Ownership of land by individuals was abolished. 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 As in, nobody owns land anymore. Families don't own their land. Communities don't own their land. So who now owns land? Governor? So if you want in my, in my land now, if you, want, if you want my land now, you go to governor to give you what? To give you ownership of my land without coming to me to buy from me, you think you will stay on that land? <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, let's read it again. All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. In the case of Buka versus Bashi, 2014, 11 Nigeria Weekly Law Report, Part 141768, it was held that the main purpose of the Land Use Act is to achieve a fusion between the land tenure system in the then northern Nigeria and the southern Nigeria, whereby absolute ownership of land by families, communities, and individuals became abolished, while all land within each state became vested in the governor of that state. See also the case of Savannah Bank of Nigeria Limited versus Ajilo. It was further held that any person or organization who desires to be granted a right of occupancy in respect of any land shall apply for such grant to the governor 
or the local government as the case may be. Upon being satisfied that an applicant is qualified to be granted a right of occupancy over any parcel of land, the governor or the local government may grant such right of occupancy and a certificate of occupancy shall be issued to the applicant. Clearly, therefore, I hold that the Ohe Ige and elders of Ikweniro village have no capacity and authority to make the grant to the claimant predecessor in title, and they, in fact, did not have the radical title they purported to grant to the claimant's predecessor in title. So the essence of this decision was that the, the, the grant of land in the Wenilo village by the Ohia Igi and the elders was null and void because they did not have the capacity to do so because um, community ownership of land was abolished by the Land Use Act, um, family ownership of land was abolished, and individual ownership of land was abolished by the Land Use Act. So all this abolishment now affected the power of the Oba because, you know, since the coming into effect of the Land Use Act, the Oba of Benin ceased to be the custodian of all land in Benin. Now, I respectfully, very respectfully, I do not agree. And I say so very, very respectfully. I bow, I tremble before the judgment and say respectfully, I do not agree. The law does not agree. There is no provision in the Land Use Act that divested people of the ownership of their land. Absolutely not. No. On the contrary, on the contrary, by the provisions of, of, the, of the Land Use Act, and I will read it in a minute, it provides that anybody who was the owner of land before the Land Use Act came into effect, anybody in whom land was vested before the Land Use Act came into effect, you are deemed to be as if the governor had granted you a statutory right of occupancy. Now, that is section 34, and I'll just read it a while. That's transitional provisions. Uh, I don't know if I'm making any bit of sense here. It's a lot of heavy legal stuff. Transitional and other related provisions, section 34. So in other words, at the date the land use act came into effect, what happened to people who were who already owned land? Okay? Because there was no land that was ownerless. I don't, I don't think there's any land anywhere where if you ask who owned this land, they say, ah, nobody get the land, we just take them. What about this one? Say nobody get them. All land in Nigeria had owners, right? Oh, well, correct or wrong? Very correct. Okay, all land in Nigeria had somebody who owned it, or a family or a community. In Nigeria, you had three sort kinds of ownership of land. You had individuals who owned land, like the one I inherited from my father or the one I bought by myself. You had families that owned land. That is, certain families owned certain land. They didn't share it. It was not partitioned among them. They know that they all own that land. When they, any, any of their members want to build, they come to the head of the family and the elders and say, okay, uh, my son who is in Lagos, he wants to come and build a house in the village or in uh, whatever. And it's okay, uh, give him one small, okay, build here. Build here. In fact, there are some, some royal families that all the members of the royal household must build around, like in Iseluku, they must all build, they will give them small, small place to build, you know, whatever, even if you are building in London, eh, that's fine, but you must build one, two or three room around that royal palace area. That's family ownership. Or you had communal, communal ownership. Where I come from, in Igbanke, in Igbanke, you had, you have land that is privately owned, then we have land that is communally owned. As in, it's owned by the entire community. No one person or family owns it. When it is time for farming season, everybody goes to farm. You just go and farm as much as you can farm. You just farm. Then stop. Then the next farming season, the community will decide, okay, let them go to this other area. Everybody will now go there to go and farm. Till tomorrow, that's how it is done. So you have... Um, um, uh, let's not forget private ownership, individual ownership, you had family ownership, and then you had community ownership of land. Now, before 1978, all land in Benin Kingdom was vested in the Oba as a custodian. 
The other was the custodian. So, as the time Nazi Subject uh, Law came in, he made the Oba as a custodian. So what happened to the Oba's custody of land in Bini Kingdom? That's the question. Because the law met him as the, the land was vested in him. Title, radical legal title was vested in the Oba. So what happened to the Oba as the law met him? Section 34.1 provides, and I read, The following provisions of this section shall have effect in respect of land in an urban area, vested in any person. Let me take it again slowly. I tend to, to read, talk fast. The following provisions of this section shall have effect in respect of land in an urban area, vested in any person, immediately before the commencement of this act. So, um, any person in whom land was vested immediately before the commencement of this act, this law shall apply to that person. Okay, English woman, is that, is that correct interpretation? The following provisions of this section shall have effect in respect of land. The provisions of this section shall have effect in respect of land in an urban area, not a rural area, urban area which is vested, to be vested means to be in the hand, somebody is holding it, eh? in any person, immediately before the commencement of this act. So this law shall apply to any person in whom land is vested, immediately before the law came into effect. The Obad of Benin had land in Benin Kingdom vested in him, immediately before the commencement of the act. Do we agree on that? Can anybody disagree on that? If you are watching this and you disagree, please DM me, send me a message, send me a letter, send me a message, whatever. Tell me you disagree that before the, before the Land Use Act, land in Bini Kingdom was not vested in the Oba. Because that's the decision of the, of the Supreme Court. Um, I've got it somewhere here. I hope, I hope, I hope. Go down, go down, Osarera. Yes, I've got it. I've got it. Can I read it? Mm. Okay. I don't read it. From page 15, go and Osarera in Supreme Court decision. Supreme Court? Yes, Supreme Court. How many justices were there? Oh, can I get them here? Uh, okay, this one doesn't tell me how many justices were there. Unless I count them from... Okay, it says here... Um, Okay. <laughs> a native may occupy land, that is, any land not already in previous occupation of any individual, for farming purposes. Although such an occupier is usually loosely referred to as the owner, he is not under Bini custom, the legal owner, until he has got approval of the other of Bini to own that land. This is because, Wadami Ho, listen, oh, go on in tea. This is because basically all land in Bini is owned by the community for whom the Oba of Bini holds the same in trust. So that's the Supreme Court that Oba of Bini held all land in trust for Bini people. Okay? And it is the Oba who can transfer to any individual the ownership of such land. And until so transferred, the occupier may continue to hold it for purposes of farming only. Uh, let's just let just read the uh, another part. We'll come back to 34 of the Land Use Act. But I just want us to understand how the Supreme Court recognized that the Oba, all land in Bini was in the, invested in the Oba before the Land Use Act came in. It appears from the evidence that the procedure for obtaining complete ownership of such land by a non-occupier is this. Column. The applicant must first negotiate with the occupier, usually the farmer, to buy the occupier's interest, that is his crops, in the land. That's number one. You will buy from the person who is on the land. Eh? And having settled with the occupier, he must then apply to the plot allotment committee who should satisfy that that negotiation for transfer or purchase of the crop thereon has been settled. Boom. 
That's number two. Thereafter, the committee will recommend to the other confirmation or approval of ownership of the land by the applicant. So, it is the other who in whom the land, the legal title of the land was vested. So now we come back. I think we agree on that. Uh, if anybody disagrees, you can write me. It's a free word. Okay? But let's let's just look at section. So, section 34 now says, the following provisions of this section shall have effect in respect of land in an urban area vested in any person, like the other, immediately before the commencement of this act. Two, where the land is developed, where the land is developed, the land shall continue to be held by the person in whom it was vested. Okay, okay, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's the code. Where the land is developed, the land shall continue to be held by the person in whom it was vested immediately before the commencement of this act. So it does not say where the land is developed, the Obar of Benin's uh, uh, holding shall be terminated. No. Where the land is developed, the land shall continue to be held by the person in whom it was vested. It shall continue to be held by the person in whom it was vested. Shall continue, the land shall continue, the land shall continue, the land shall continue to be held by the person in whom it was vested. The person in whom the land was vested shall continue to hold the land. He does not say, your holding will be terminated. So, I don't know with due respect, where people got the interpretation from that the Land Use Act removed the Obar of Benin from anything to do with land in Benin Kingdom. Now, I know there are people who are going to come at me and say, ah, Adele, now you they talk this one. Ah, <laughs> now you they talk this one. I'm looking at the law. This is the law show. This is not a, a what do you call it now? It's not fake news or Pararam fake news. Oh, it's not a comedy show. This one is law show, law. We discuss law here. Irrespective of whose ox is God. That's what we talk here. But we talk it respectfully. With a smile, okay? So smile if you are watching. But the law is that where the land is developed, the land shall continue to be held by the person in whom it was vested Immediately before the commencement of this act. Aye. As if the holder of the land was the holder of a statutory right of occupancy issued by the governor under this act. In other words, in other words, if land was vested in you before the land use act came into effect, you will continue under the land use act to hold the same land as if you are the holder of a statutory right of occupancy granted by the governor or issued by the governor under this act. What do I mean? If we have agreed by God and Osarene that all land in the Kingdom was vested in the Oba before the land use act came into effect, it therefore follows that upon the coming into effect of the land use act, the Oba continued to hold all land in Benin as if he was the holder of a statutory right of occupancy granted by the governor. No more, no less. So the question is, where do people, where did they get the interpretation which is commonly held that since the coming into effect of the Land Use Act, the Obar of Benin ceased to be the custodian of land in Benin. Where do you get it from? I, and I ask with due respect. I bow and, and then I tremble. But I ask questions because the purpose of this show is to ask questions. Where do you get it from? Section 34 2 says where the land is developed, the land shall continue to be held by the person in whom it was vested immediately before the commencement of this act, as if the holder of the land was the holder of a statutory right of occupancy issued by the governor under this act. Then three, okay, and, and so on and so forth. Let's not dwell too much on it. So from the provision of the land use act, there are actually two types of 
um, right of occupancy, statutory right of occupancy, okay, two types of customary right of occupancy, is the type of the people in whom the land was vested before the land use act came into effect. So those ones in law are the ones that are called deemed grant. They are deemed to have been granted. They are started right of occupancy by the governor. That's the one side. The second group of people are people who actually apply to the governor for their own right, statutory right of occupancy. And the governor gives them a certificate. The first group are the group into which everyone who had land before 1978 falls into. Okay. So I'm just going to read a few authorities here. Don't know how long we have run. Make sure it's not too long. How many minutes? Okay, that's good. All right. I'm just going to read this one. Um, now, you remember that um, there was a postulation that of absolute ownership of land by families, communities, and individuals became abolished. Okay? <laughs> While all land within the state became vested in the governor of that state. I have no quarrel with the vesting on the governor. While all land was vested in the governor, you know, to use for the common benefit of all, um, yet, people who owned land, in a sense, continued with the ownership of their land so you had you individuals can still sell land you cannot get a certificate of occupancy from the governor if you have not settled with the owner of the land and i've i've said so in several articles in several can individuals still sell land after 1978 um there's one case ishola versus ulua logbon if you are a lawyer, you can make notes and um, you can have a look. It's a reported decision of the Court of Appeal in Ibadan, 5th of December 2013, uh, reported in 2014, Volume 21, Weekly Reports of Nigeria, page 68. So I'm going to just read a part of it, you know, which kind of. Um, hmm. Now, in this case, this, this is this was an interesting case. In this case, the owner of the land, owner, quote and unquote, now did not have a certificate of occupancy issued by the governor. He did not apply. He did not care. When the case went to court, they say you don't have certificate of occupancy. I have certificate. You don't have. And this is what the court of appeal said by Justice Samani. This is what he said. In the instant case, it is evident that David Oluwole Ishola, the appellant's father, had not been issued with a statutory certificate of occupancy, nor a customary certificate of occupancy. Since there is no contrary evidence, it is also safe to presume that he was in occupation or possession of the land before 1978, when the Land Use Act was promulgated, or at least his predecessor in title. In other words, Either he was in possession or the person he bought from before the land use act came into effect. Uh -huh. So now let's see whether the court say, oh, your title was uh, abolished. It is also not in dispute that the land in dispute being situated in Ibadan is a land situated and lying in an urban area. The land had also been developed as the subject of dispute is not an empty urban land but buildings consisting of four flats, of three bedrooms each. Section 34, 1 and 2, that's the one we read, of the Land Use Act, 1970, stipulates that, 34, 1. The following provisions of this section shall have effect in respect of land in an urban area vested in any person immediately before the commencement of this act. This one now is individual land. I will also talk about community land. Two. When the land is developed, the land shall continue to be held by the person in whom the, it was vested immediately before the commencement of this act, as if the holder was a holder of a statutory right of occupancy issued by the governor under the act. Unquote. <clears throat> it will be seen, therefore, that by the provision of section 34.1 and 2 of the Land Use Act, 
deems the holder of the developed land immediately before the commencement of the act to be the holder of such land by way of statutory right of occupancy. You see it? It will be seen, therefore, that by the provisions of section 34, 1 and 2 of the Land Use Act, deems, deems the holder of, the, of developed land immediately before the commencement of the act to be the holder of such land by way of a statutory right of occupancy. Thus, in Adole versus Gua, which is another a decision of the Supreme Court, it was held that Section 34 of the Land Use Act recognizes the title. Oh my goodness! <clears throat> In Adole and Gua, it was held that Section 34 of the Land Use Act recognizes the title of persons who were on the land before 1978 when the act was promulgated. It recognizes the title of persons who were on the land. It does not abolish their title. It recognizes the title of persons who were on the land. I'm sorry, Jen, sorry, uh, Jen, I'm not the one that wrote it. Oh, it's a Supreme Court decision. Oh. <clears throat> that if the land was developed land in an urban area, the holders thereof are deemed holders of statutory rights of occupancy issued by the governor by virtue of section 34, 2 and 3 of the act. Such statutory holding or occupancy of the person over the land therefore comes into effect automatically by operation of law. Automatic. Similarly, in CSS Bookshops Limited versus River State, uh, blah, 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 Rivers, that was from Portal Court, also a Supreme Court decision. The Supreme Court held that by virtue of Section 34, 1 and 2 of the Act, developed land situated in the Portal Court urban area was vested in the occupier immediately before the commencement of the Act, and that such occupiers shall continue to hold sale as if they were holders of statutory right of occupancy issued by the governor. I don't know if I'm, if I'm making sense. It therefore goes without saying. I like the way judges write. You know, they write beautiful prose, beautiful English. He said, it therefore goes without saying. That's, let's not talk about it. It just, it just goes. That from the facts of this case and the law applicable there to, the appellant was deemed to be vested with title to those properties as the holder of a statutory right of occupancy issued by the Oyo state governor. He didn't say, it goes without saying that the title of the man was abolished, was extinguished. The fact, listen, oh, please, listen, listen to this part. This is very important. The fact that he evaded, or rather avoided, obtaining a statutory certificate of occupancy would not derogate from that fact. The man refused to apply for a certificate of occupancy. Court of Appeal said it does not matter. The land still is his own. By the authorities, therefore, which I shall refer to later, it is settled law that it was his responsibility as the seller or vendor of the land to apply for the consent of the governor so as to sell the land under the act. Now, this, 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 this decision was a powerful one. In fact, this was the case where the court said, um, you know, again, if you recall the case that we are looking at by the High Court in Edo State, which I respect so much, although I also respectfully disagree. The court said that the transfer of land um, was null and void because that is the provision of the land use act here they distinguish between two things one an agreement to sell land and two the transfer of the land and the court of appeal said and this case was argued by you know by <laughs> okay very eminent lawyers court of appeal said if you say that uh, every transfer of land is void because the consent of the governor was not obtained before the land was transferred, the court of appeal asks, where will the consent of the governor be written? Like in the case of the Oba, 
The Oba cannot write approve in the air now, Abi. <laughs> it's on a document. It is the document from the community to the Oba that the Oba will write approved on. It's not going to take uh, an empty piece of paper like this and just write approved. Oh, well, take. The same thing with the governor. It is the deed of transfer between uh, Owen and Dele, deed of transfer of land, that Dele will not take to the governor and say, give me consent. Isn't that right? That's what they said here. That it does not make sense for anyone to contend that because the governor's consent is not on that document, the document is void. It is on that document you go and obtain the governor's consent. And that is correct. If you go to a ministry of land in any state, the governor's consent is always, there's a column they leave for governor's consent. When they are transfer of land between two people, at the end they will write, I hereby consent to this transaction. Sign, governor of Edo state or governor of Imo state or wherever. So it is on that document the governor must put his consent. So if you say the document is void, where will the governor put his consent? If you say you must obtain the consent of the governor before you do the transaction, how are you going to go to the governor and say, Governor, please give us consent to do a transaction which we have not even agreed on the price? So my argument, my postulation based on this one is individual ownership of land continued. I think we have done a lot on this, isn't it? We are going to have to do a part two on whether the Obar of Bini have power over land after the Land Use Act has come into effect. And if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, you need to subscribe. You need to subscribe. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And let's have your comments. See you in the next video. Bye.